speak to David Patsikarakos, who's the author of War in 140 Characters, How Social Media is Reshaping Conflict in the 21st Century. Uh, David, thanks so much indeed for your time. I think the important thing uh, for the casual viewer, at least, or reader, is that your book draws upon your time embedded uh, for months during this conflict that is continuing in Ukraine. How is it possible to explain these rapid advances by the Ukrainian army? Well, I mean, I don't think it's, it's all that surprising now. We, we've seen them do similar things since since the beginning of the war. Look, we need to, to keep things in perspective as well. The, the key front remains the southern front, Kherson down in the south. That is the access to Crimea and to Ukraine's coastline. But what we saw very simply here was, was what I can only describe as the Ukrainian blitzkrieg. They blitzed through towns and conquered towns and villages, liberating them. And I think there's an important point that we have to make here which is not just that the Russians collapsed and retreated, it's the manner in which they did it. In many places, they just fled. They left some of their best equipment, their drones, their tanks, they left them in the field. Now, this is disastrous when it comes to morale and when it comes to recruiting, recruiting new people to try and fight in, uh, fight in Ukraine. A very, very bad, bad weekend for Russia and a very, very good weekend for Ukraine. Yeah, and that's exactly the point. How could the Russians have retreated in such disarray? And what does it do for their efforts there in the Northeast, especially for the Donbass regions, which they want complete control over before thinking about anything else? Look, I mean, how did it happen? I think, I think it happened because in the final analysis, while Russia is very big, has lots of men, has lots of uh, equipment, they're not all that good. I mean, you know, I don't want to be hubristic about this because they're still there. They're still sitting on Ukrainian territory. But the fact is, this 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 idea we were sold of this impregnable Russian army, this Russian army that would conquer Ukraine in three days, is simply false. And this happened because the people there are loads of conscripts, half whom don't want to be there, not especially well trained in many cases, and morale is a, is very very low. So when things get tough, they're in another country, they don't want to be there, so they flee. Why should they give up their lives for for a war that? makes no sense for a czar sitting in the Kremlin who seems to be going madder and madder by the week. David, during your time embedded uh, with troops uh, in Ukraine, what did you assess in terms of their ability to carry on this conflict, possibly for years, if there were to be some sort of line of control along the east of Ukraine with soldiers on each side of that? How are the Ukrainians thinking about what's coming in the future? Look, when I was I was there in, in, in May and June and I went into the east, to the Donbass, I went to all three fronts. I went to the southern front, to Mykolaiv and beyond, to the Donbass, the eastern front, and to the northeastern front at Kharkiv, which has just been liberated. I honestly never met a Ukrainian soldier that was interested in negotiating over territory or surrendering. Morale is very, very high. It will be higher even now. Now, look, set against that, look, what is the danger here for Ukraine? Okay, I don't think that the Russian forces are now going to take Kiev. I just don't see it happening. I don't think Russia can militarily win this war unless aid to Ukraine stops. What they can do is sit on the country for years and strangle it economically, especially the Donbass. They have that land bridge to Crimea now. So I think what you can do is you, if you cannot defeat Ukraine, you can at least stop it evolving, stop it progressing, stop it becoming what it wants to be most, uh, a liberated, free Western nation. David, always appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. David Patrick Karakos in Athens.